Special treatment versus day quality. Now, everyone now goes on their A quality. They got Disability Awareness Week. They got all this stuff going on. Let's treat everyone equal, treat everyone equal. Now, let me give you an example of equal treatment versus special treatment. Now, one day, I was at TAFE, I went to Macquarie Fields, I was still in fitness at TAFE. And up until then, I was pretty fit, training hard, I was doing athletics. I was at the track three days a week, I was work, working on 100 meter sprints. I wanted to get quicker over the 100 meters. And I took myself real serious. I thought I could be the best. I also played a touch footy comp with in an able-bodied player competition. I was the only one there with a disability because I knew if I played with all able-bodied players and I could keep up with them, how much would that build my skills? Now, when I was playing against able-bodied players at touch football, when I had the ball, I wanted them to pretend I was anyone else and just run up and touch me as quick as they would anyone else. That way, I could see when I was out with my skills. Um, if they touch me a bit later the next time, maybe my running was getting a bit quicker. Actually, I did work out how to be effective as a player with a disability in an able-bodied competition. What I did was I worked on my passing. I passed against the wall. I grabbed my mum, get her to pass the ball with me. Anyone I could pass the ball with, I practiced as much as I could. So what I did in this everybody comp, I started running with the ball, and as soon as an able-bodied player went to touch me, I'd had a support runner coming right off me and I passed it to him at the last second, draw him past, and fit that player through a hole every time, and they'd run the lane and scored, score on that end of the field because the defender seeing a disability player in the neighborhood he come wouldn't expect me to be able to pass the ball that good. So there was ways for me to be effective in the able-bodied comp, in the able-bodied team. And they all love me for that. Now, touch for you was all going pretty good. Until one day, I was first in his team. Someone passed me the ball and the whole team stood there. And they didn't want to tap me. They wanted me to run through and score a try. I didn't want to score a try unless I earned it. No matter how hard it would be to score a try against the everybody team, if I didn't earn it or if I didn't do it myself and it wasn't real, I'd rather not score a try in the whole life. What's the point of training hard? when someone's just gonna let you score a try. All that training that you do, all that taking yourself serious, all that hard work is a waste if people were just gonna let me score a try. I may as well have just done nothing. So, another reason is that 
when someone's just standing there letting you run, they're pretty much thinking that you're done, that you're not going to notice that they're giving you special treatment. And I got really embarrassed, and I just wanted to go home and never play again. Now, another example is when now I'm in a, a disability rugby league competition, we had a training session not long ago, and there was a drill where you had to run up to a cane run sideways to the next cane and then run backwards to the to the cane after it. After that and that was a drill up sideways backwards. Now the first time I ran backwards I could do it but it was a bit slow and it was a bit hard but I knew the more I do it, the more I get better at it. My whole life has been practice. Practice always makes perfect. I learned that when I was young. That's why I can do a lot of stuff now, more than most everybody plays, because I do it over and over and over and over and over till I get good at it. Now, when I was running backwards in this drill, the trainer said to me, he said, you know what? Why don't you just run forwards instead of running backwards? He goes, do up, run your sideways, then run forward. Don't worry about running backwards. And in my head, I'm thinking, do you really give a shit about me? If you're telling me to not worry about running backwards, I'm never progressing. I'm never building that skill. Um, I just got a job recently where everyone was being too nice to me. I'd go to lunch and they'd unzip me bag before I even asked them, not that I would ask them to help me unzip my, my bag because I could do it myself. Um, when people hurt you too much, or when people help you without you asking them to help you, they are robbing you of building your life skills. Um, a lot of people with disabilities, they are so sheltered and they never will progress because people are too nice to them. I'm a lot luckier than most people with disabilities. I grew up in Brindelli. Now at Brindelli, I had an old mate, Charlie. I knew Charlie since I was a kid. But when I was about 14 years old, I started going to Charlie's house. And I'd talk to him, Charlie, at the time I was about 13, 14. Charlie was in his mid-60s. Anyway, Charlie would tell me stories about him and his poem, and I'd sit there and listen to him all day. I loved it. Now, Charlie also would, could draw. He was a real good drawer, and I was just starting to get an interest in drawing. So what I'd do is I'd go home, draw a picture, take it to Charlie, and say, Charlie, now if my drawing wasn't good enough or there was a lot of mistakes, Charlie would stare at my drawing for five minutes and he'd grab the pencil and he'd circle every mistake that he could see on that drawing and he'd say, all right, you got to fix this, you got to fix this, you got to fix this. If there were more mistakes, if there was a lot of mistakes, he'd tell me to rip it up and start again, and I hated hearing that. But the thing is, if Charlie didn't point out mistakes and tell me where I was going wrong, 
Charlie was just wanted to be nice to me and tell me whatever drawing I handed to him, tell me it was good, I will never get better. Because Charlie picked out my mistakes and gave me advice on what I needed to work on is the reason why now I can draw better than most people can. I'm a real good drawer now. I can do animation and everything. See, that's what someone with a disability needs. I've known a lot of people with disabilities who have gotten jobs and all of a sudden there was no more work for them. And I found out later that the reason there was no more work for them is because the people with disabilities who got the job, they were blind and looking at their phone and they weren't doing the right thing at work. The problem is that the bosses didn't want to give them that criticism. So they just let them go. They didn't want to hurt their feelings. So they let them go. They left them out led them astray. Instead of worrying about hurting someone with a disability's feelings, why not give them criticism, good criticism? Say to them, you're at work, you can't look at your phone. Point to them out what they're not doing right, what they could do better. Build their skills. Don't be scared to put them into a hard a job that's a bit harder, a bit more of a challenge. If they fail, let them know it's alright, but keep learning them till they can do it. Just because you can't do a skill that, and you're not got a disability, it doesn't mean a person with a disability can't do the skill that you can't do. At the end of the day, whoever wants it more will get it, no matter who they are. I just got a job recently. When I got the job, I was there, and all the other workers kept telling me to sit down, have a rest, have a rest. I'm probably more fitter than they are. When I go to work, I want to work hard and I want to work all day. If I sit there all day, and go to work and do nothing. It's not good for my mental health. You want to feel, you want to leave work at the end of the day, knowing that you did a challenge and you did a good solid day's work. So the moral to this episode is special treatment versus equal treatment. If you meet someone with a disability. Don't ask them if they got the bus here. Don't predict that they can't drive. And don't baby them and try and help them do any, everything. If they want help, they'll ask you. If you got someone with a disability and helping too much, you're robbing them of ever building their skills and being independent. So instead of babying and pushing to do what everyone else can, don't have the expectations for them. You don't know what they can do unless they practice it over and over and over and over. If you have the expectations of them, you are robbing them of ever knowing what they could have been. I can draw, I can play football, I can drive, drive a forklift, drive a truck. I can do much more than an able-bodied person can. Because I had the right people that didn't bathe me, they pushed me and they had the patience to teach me a way to do hard things that everybody else can do. They didn't say, oh, here, have a rest and baby me. 
They didn't have low expectations. They believed that I could do anything.